Hi friends, welcome to Moody Blooms. I have received several requests to make a care video for the Scandapsis trubii moonlight plant, and I'm excited to review their care info, as well as propagation, their problems, and some growing tips with you all. Now the trubii moonlight is also known as Silver Sterling Scandapsis, and this beauty is a relatively new houseplant and was quite difficult to find a few years ago. Around the end of 2020, it really started becoming quite popular. It was definitely the it plant of 2021, and it definitely hasn't slowed down in its popularity. It is easier to find now, and there's a few different varieties of the Scandapsis trubii. There is the dark form, which is definitely more rare and definitely more expensive. There's also the Trubii Mint plant, the Moonlight Variegata, and the Trubii Albo. Costa Farms has made this plant available to retailers, and it took them about three and a half to four years to build up their stock in order to supply large amounts of the plant around North America. And this is because it's such a slow growing plant. Although the good news with it being slow growing is that it won't take over your space. So it's perfect for a smaller space or a plant that you don't want growing too tall or too wide. So other than Costa Farms, you may be able to find this at small scale nurseries or places like eBay or Etsy. I've also seen it at Lowe's and Walmart. Common names for Scandapsis trubii moonlight are Sterling Silver Scandapsis, trubii moonlight, Scandapsis moonlight, moonlight pothos, or Sterling Silver pothos. And of course it is not a pothos plant, although it is uh, related. It's a close relative of Monstera, Philodendrons, and pothos. And it's also uh, a lot less common and can be hard to find in certain regions. The leaves of Scandapsis moonlight are much more narrow than Pictus varieties. Let's review some Scandapsis trubii care tips. Now, of course, this beauty is popular because it has these beautiful, thick, heart-shaped, dark green leaves. And the leaves have this beautiful, stunning, silvery sheen that has this kind of satin-like finish. It's just gorgeous. And this is a, a climbing plant, and they're actually... Um, quite a slower grower than many other varieties, but they still love to climb. And they'll actually produce larger leaves if you give it a moss pole or a trellis to climb. And of course, the conditions have to be right. They like, you know, warm, bright locations. And it's also perfect hanging on a shelf or just set on a table. Just make sure you keep it out of reach of children and pets because these are unfortunately toxic. Now, the Trubii Moonlight is native to the jungles of Southeast Asia, so any way that you can mimic their natural habitat will help them grow happier and healthier. So they prefer a medium to bright and direct light. Um, they love any room filled with lots of filtered light, or I like to place them near an east-facing window. A south-facing window will also work as long as it is out of direct sun, because the leaves can sunburn. And you also want it about three feet from the window of a south-facing window to maximize the growth potential. Now, although it does prefer bright light, it can also survive in low light settings. Although just keep in mind that if it is in a lower light setting, it's gonna grow slower and it might not be quite as full or lush. And occasionally if it, it's getting very insufficient light, then it might have difficulty thriving and it may even drop some leaves without enough light. The good news is, is it doesn't need natural sunlight to thrive. It can actually thrive in both natural and artificial light. Be sure to keep out of direct sun as this can sunburn and the leaves may also be stunted with their growth if it's getting too much sun. So next we're going to cover the water and this plant needs to be watered regularly, but make sure the soil dries out between waterings. You want the soil to be moist, but not soggy. Now it's important to not overwater the Scandapsis trubii because they can experience root rot if their soil stays wet for too long. So you may notice that the leaves start to curl under if it stays too wet for too long or even too dry for too long. You want to make sure you soak it thoroughly, but do not let it sit in water for long periods of time. And also make sure your pot has uh, great drainage. I personally don't water on a schedule. I typically wait until the soil is almost completely dry. Um, some prefer to water when the top few inches of the soil are dry, but I wait till it's completely dry. Uh, it also depends on your climate and your conditions. Uh, luckily, its leaves are thick and they can hold a lot of water in them before it dries out too much. Uh, another great way to water these is by weight. So if you can lift up the plant pot and it feels a little bit dry to you, then you know that it needs some water. So you can also check the leaves. If they feel flimsy and start to curl slightly, it's most likely in need of a good drink. And you can always, of course, use a moisture meter. It's also 
uh, inexpensive and they're super easy to use. The soil for Scandapsis trebii should be porous and well draining. This is super important because these plants are pretty sensitive to root rot. A commercial well draining cactus or succulent soil mix works. You can also uh, take normal potting mix and add plenty of perlite. I also like to add orchid bark. Another option is to combine equal parts of perlite, vermiculite, and peat moss. Cocoa core is also a great alternative to peat moss and it's a little bit more eco friendly. But whatever you choose, make sure the potting mix is well draining and that it doesn't retain too much water. Now these plants prefer temperatures anywhere from around 64 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. And they have a temperature tolerance between 55 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. They are not frost hardy, so make sure if you're in a colder climate that you bring them inside when temperatures drop. And this is important because it can also cause the growth to be stunted if it gets too cold. Also avoid placing it next to a window during the cold winter months and always avoid drafts or air conditioning vents. Also temperatures that are too high may result in wilting leaves. So it can be grown outdoors all year long in zones 10B or above. This tropical plant prefers humidity around 60%, although they can tolerate humidity or as low as around like 40%. However, if you notice tips are brown and you're getting crispy yellow leaves, it, you may need to increase the humidity and you can do that easily by um, placing a pebble tray nearby or a humidifier is always an option. You can fertilize this plant in spring and summer with a houseplant fertilizer. And I prefer a higher ratio of nitrogen a balanced fertilizer will also do, but I feel that this plant in particular needs the little extra nitrogen to stay full and flush, but be sure to, of course, always follow packaging directions. This plant doesn't need too much pruning, but if you prefer more of a tidy look, you can definitely prune the trailing vines and that'll help it to grow fuller on top. Just make sure to always use clean, sterile pruning shears or scissors before you cut off any vines. And always, of course, prune any dead or damaged leaves to keep your plant looking healthy and fresh. Now this plant is a slow grower, so it doesn't need to be repotted too often. Of course, if you do see roots growing out of the bottom of your pot, it's definitely gonna need um, a larger pot, but only repot it if it's outgrown its current pot. Personally, I like to repot during the spring and I typically use terracotta pots because they are porous and they absorb water and they allow excess moisture to be released through the soil more quickly. Now, if you wanna grow your Scandapsis trubii collection, propagation is the way to go. And a great way to do this is through division or soil or water propagation. And of course, the fastest, easiest way is through division. And to do that, you just really need to separate the roots gently, and then you can place the new plant in a pot of well-draining soil. Just make sure you hold off on watering for a few days to allow any damage that has been done to the roots to heal. You can also propagate these via soil or water. And this can easily be done by taking cuttings. It's very similar to propagating pothos. So if you've seen my video on that, you can pretty much follow that directly to the T. Um, but these are not gonna grow as fast as the pothos plant. But make sure you always use clean shears. You're gonna make a cut just below a leaf node and that's where the roots are gonna grow from. And I like to leave one or two leaves on top and that's so that it can focus on putting energy towards growing new roots and not trying to keep the leaves alive. And then you can Place that cutting in a pot of moist soil, or you can also use equal parts uh, peat moss and perlite, um, or you can set it directly in water. And if you are going the soil route, I like to place these in a Ziploc bag. I miss the plant, seal them up, leave a little bit of the portion of the zipper open to allow some air circulation, and then about every week or so, open it up, let some fresh air in, and add some more humidity. If you're growing it in water, obviously when the roots get about two or three inches long, it can be planted into some well-draining soil. Now, luckily the prices for the Scandapsis trubii moonlight plants have come down quite a bit since their induction in 2019. Currently prices range anywhere from 10 to $50 with the majority of sellers selling them for around $30. Costa Farms currently has a nine inch tall plant in a six inch ceramic pot that is available and they also could be found on uh, Gabriella Plants. There's several on Amazon that are available and Hertz also has a, a four inch pot available for sale online. Now these are pretty easy, low maintenance house plants, although they do have a few problems. And the most common problem is typically over watering or underwatering. So make sure you're checking the plant once a week to see if it needs water, but only water it when it's completely dry. 
most of the problems that this plant has, if they are caught early, you can correct them and the plant will continue to thrive. Although rare, Scandapsis trubii moonlight is susceptible to common indoor houseplant pests like mealybugs or aphids, spider mites, and sometimes even scale. Just make sure to routinely check them for signs of infestation. And organic insecticidal soap works great and is safe to use on houseplants. Neem oil spray is also a beneficial option. Fortunately, this plant doesn't suffer from too many diseases. The most common is going to be root rot. And this is, of course, from overwatering in combination with maybe poor drainage. And those two are the perfect storm for root rot. The excess moisture gets trapped in the soil and then it starts breeding bacteria. The leaves will wilt and yellow and may eventually turn black. Now, you can actually remedy this if you catch it quickly. You want to make sure you remove it from the soil, gently shake off any excess soil, and then cut off any black mushy roots with sanitized shears, and then make sure you repot it in fresh, well-draining soil and hold off on watering for a bit. Now, occasionally this plant will develop yellow leaves, and there is a couple different reasons for this, but the most common culprit is overwatering. At the first sign of yellow leaves, make sure the soil is not overly wet. If it seems dry and the leaves are yellow and brittle, uh, lack of watering could be the cause. If you don't suspect that watering is the issue, it could be low humidity. This can also cause yellowing leaves. And you can also see some yellow leaves with black spots that might be a fungal infection. Make sure to increase your airflow and you can also use a fungicide spray. Curling leaves on the Scandapsis moonlight are common due to lack of moisture in the soil or the air. So if you see this, make sure you increase your water or the humidity to remedy this issue. If the leaves of your trubii are drooping, it may be the result of insufficient watering. Again, too much or too little, or even insufficient sunlight. An underwatered Scandapsis trubii may cause drooping or wilted foliage. Soak the soil and the leaves should perk back up in a day or two. If temperatures are too high, the leaves may also droop or wilt. So just keep an eye on that. Insufficient light may also upset your moonlight, and this is easily fixed by giving it some good bright indirect light. Now, if you see brown tips on the edge of your moonlight leaves, could be overwatering, poor drainage, or high levels of salt in the soil. And of course, this can be issued by watering the soil when it's dry, using well-draining soil. You can also use distilled water or rainwater if necessary. Thanks so much for joining us on Moody Blooms. I hope you learn more about the Scandapsis trubii moonlight plant. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you have any suggestions for a future video, go ahead and leave those in the comments as well. And if you have any care tips you want to share, also comment section is a great place to post those. Have a great day and we'll see you next time on Moody Blooms.